Gold as money is a done deal. It's happening. I'll show you that. What does this mean for silver? Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. Welcome on in. And again, it is Monday, which means it's time for Vince Lancey's Silver Report. And in this week's show, he talks about how if gold is money and is now increasingly, especially in the East, being used as a settlement mechanism, and we see further plans for the establishment of that, what role does that leave silver in? And that is what he digs into in today's show. So I think you're going to enjoy that. And with that said, here is Vince. This week, I had something planned that was related to miners as I've gone down a deep dive to understand uh, the mining industry. But I think that's the next play in precious metals. But I was doing some, some work, some research on, a, on a, another Zoltan post. And... A couple of things just tripped my way and made me rethink something. And it's about silver. And so I want to share that with you now without going too far down a rabbit hole. We're not going to take a lot of time here, maybe 15 minutes. We want to get right into it. Okay. There are two things that I want you to take away from this. Gold as money is a done deal. It's happening. I'll show you that. What does this mean for silver is the question I asked myself. And the reason I asked myself that question was because of the way the information started coming out. And the answer is silver will be remonetized again. Definitely. Which means silver will go a lot higher. And that's what we all care about ultimately. But I'm going to give you the thing that allows you to sleep at night. This is what's going to happen. It can't, it can't be undone. It's, it's happening. It can only be undone by war. And even then it will be undone. Okay, so I'm going to try and stay on track here and not get goofy, right? Nutty professor stuff. But this is all, your takeaway from this should be, I don't care about the price tomorrow. I know where this is going. Okay, I don't care about the path from A to B. I know it's getting to B. All right, so here we go. I've been covering this from a mile high vantage point for the last year and writing about it on Goldfix. And before that, it was the core of my knowledge and financial interests since 1997 when I started trading precious metals derivatives. And there's no, there's no sense of being falsely humble. I've been right on almost everything that I've talked about. Um, from China hoarding gold in 2016, from uh, China backing the yuan in gold in 2017, to the use of blockchain to remonetize gold again, 2017, to the effects of mercantilism on money, trying to tie it all together this past year, and what this all means to me as a metal holder and you know and, and you as well. So today, pursuant to the whole gold is money again, what does this mean for silver? Today we're going to give you the next leg in the monetary journey we are all on. Okay. Gold as money is a done deal. I'm just going to throw, throw through some notes I have here before I get into the whole thing. Okay. Once the East's, the BRICS, alternative to SWIFT reaches critical mass, which will happen probably soon, we will have a multipolar monetary world. Uh, we'll include, I'll include a link to this, to an explanation of this product. It's called the Enbridge Project, and it's done by the BRICS nations. But you'll be able to choose between Western, Fiat, and Eastern gold. And we'll probably throw some gold in there soon eventually as well. But the question is, why gold? Remember the, the whole BRICS thing, the whole, I'm sorry, the Bretton Woods thing? It's going to be a basket of commodities and oil and natural gas and all this other horse shit in there. You can't do that. It's, you just can't handicap economies on commodities that go bad 
on commodities that uh, deteriorate. You need, you need a store of value that doesn't rust. You need a store of value that doesn't get eaten by bugs. You need gold and silver. But for the longest time, I was not positive on silver being monetized or re-monetized again because it's so important industrially. Um, the price of silver as it currently exists, because silver is used industrially, uh, you can't monetize it. It goes all the way back to the cross of gold speech, okay? Uh, but gold is completely useless. It, it's too expensive to use for anything else. Otherwise, we use it to, to uh, in place of copper, right? But it's so expensive, it remains a store of value. It's unchanging quality. And it's more expensive because it's rare. It's valued entirely on its rarity on earth. And that's why it's good for money. That's why gold is money. And we know why silver is not money. And that's because it has industrial applications. So why am I more comfortable with silver as money again, literally as money. And I don't mean, I don't mean, I don't mean uh, valued as money. I mean, tier one asset. I mean, hoarded by banks. I mean, I mean, gold. All right, so to answer that, we have to start with the whole Bretton Woods Street concept started by Zoltan Pulsar. We're not gonna go into that, but it kind of goes like this. They wanted to have commodity currencies, Right, they wanted to put their assets in there, whether it be pistachios or wheat or silver or gold. And we noted that, along with Chris and other people, all the buying uh, of silver by India, which probably is for Russia as well, not just for not just for India. Um, so, so we're saying, okay, all these things are going to go into the basket. But as time went forward, I, I personally could not figure out not that I not that I not that it's not above my pay grade, but I couldn't figure out how they were going to put. Uh, oil in there, not just because oil is uh, a deteriorating commodity, but because what you do with oil is what you create in your economy. So if you're good at using oil and I'm not, then how can we value them the same? Your intellectual capital goes into it. But no matter how smart you are, you can't do shit to improve gold. It's gold. So it's easy to value uniformly. So I said, they're not going to be able to put <laughs> they're not going to be able to put um, other commodities in there so easily. I mean, I don't think they have the uh, I don't think they have the brains to do that. I don't know who does, you know, without having a fight. So I went, right, it's going to come down to gold, right? And and I was just keeping, I was saying, it's going to be gold, and I don't know how they put other stuff in it, but that's fine, right? So then you start looking at these stories that are coming out, right? Uh, a year ago, Zoltan mentions gold. And then he doesn't mention it for six months. And then I discovered this guy back then named, I'm saying his name probably wrong, Sergei Glazyev. And he seems to be the Russian equivalent of Zoltan. Uh, their stories would parallel, I noticed. But then their statements got very similar and, and, and with one exception. Suppose I stopped talking about gold and, and Glazyev started yakking it up even more. Uh, and then they started quoting each other. And in December, Pozar writes a big piece focused on gold, a lot of gold in there, oil and other things in there. That's December 5th. And they're quoting each other now. Then on the January 21st, right? Uh, a little over a month later, Glazyev does a post extolling the virtues of gold. On January 21st, he writes a massive gold recognition as money. I mean, he gets into the mining, he gets into everything on it. And I go, okay, so, and he's quoting Pozar in this article. And I go, okay, so they're going back and forth. I go, basically, they're like PR guys, you know, uh, uh, for things. And, 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 and then I, I say, well, okay, so it's speeding up. Something's going to happen here. And then this happens. January 27th, two days ago, I see this. Boom. It's over, guys. Gold's money again. 
This is a paper put out by the IMF describing gold as an international reserve, meaning so they can do it trades cross-border. It's mercantilism, it's gold, it's money, it's all that stuff I love to talk about. But it, what it is, is they're putting a paper out telling you that they're remonetizing gold. It's done. It's a done fucking deal. It's over. It's happening. Okay? So I'm like, well, is it just going to be gold? Because gold would be a lot higher, I would think, or something else. There's, it, it seems too simple. So I go back I go back to, um, to the uh, article I just described to you. And you seen that article there in the first line? It says gold in parentheses along with silver has been the core of the global financial system for millennia. An equivalent, an honest and equivalent, meaning it's, it's neutral. An honest measure of the value of paper money and assets. And then he goes into it. But the, the, the key about this is he's never mentioned silver before. And in this article, he mentions all the things that I happen to know are monetary commodities. Uh, you know, palladium, platinum, metals that don't corrode metals that can be stores of value, whether monetary like gold or economic like copper. He talks about these things because they persist. They don't go away. But he never mentioned silver before. And he's been talking about gold for six months. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Pozar barely talked about it until last month. So now you've got gold, gold. And you got to, by the way, Pozar puts out his post like once a month. You put out like three in a month. They're rushing things. Something's going to happen. All right. So why does this, other than me seeing the word silver there and saying, okay, silver's in there. It's uh, silver's going to be money. Like, other than my opinion, other than my speculative opinion, uh, where's my, where's my information? Where's my, where's my proof? Okay. What does gold being remonetized mean for silver? I'm going to spell it out for you now. It's going to happen. The BRICs are moving to a gold-backed, decentralized, central bank digital currency with gold on the blockchain. Gold on the blockchain, gold backing currencies, whether it be the yuan or the ruble or what have you, those currencies are going to be guaranteed, whether it be soft or hard, by gold. Kind of like the Swiss franc was not too long ago. So what happens next? Silver, here's what happens. This is great. Because no other commodity will be used, assuming for this moment, no other commodity will be used to go in the basket, so it's just be gold right now. Let's assume that silver will not go in the basket. Now I've contended before, silver's industrial use makes it unable to go in the basket. But here's the exceptions. The higher silver goes in price, the more difficult it is to use an in industry. That's the first reason. For example, if gold was a lot cheaper, you use it instead of copper for wiring. Why is not gold a lot cheaper? Because it's so fucking rare. Let's move to silver. If silver were to go up in price, it would be cost prohibitive to be used in industry. What would happen then? It will become a pure monetary metal. I'm not predicting it'll happen tomorrow, not fully tomorrow, but as the price of silver goes up, it becomes used less in industry. What ends up happening is, as the price of silver rises, it will start to appreciate and approach the natural ratio of gold in the mining world. What's that level, 16 to one? That's one of the levels that people discuss all the time. <laughs> what I'm getting at is, all right, so I'm gonna walk through this little craziness that I gave you. Number one, there will be no fungible commodities in the Bretton Woods basket. Two, 
It will include a monetary substitute for the dollar, presumably gold. Nothing else fits it as perfectly. The close second to gold is silver. Let's assume for this conversation they don't include silver in this basket. At least not yet. What's going to happen? What happens is commodities in general become more valued based on their usefulness. And if they're not useful, they get valued based on their rarity. Silver, which up until now has been the worst of both worlds, right? Meaning it's sort of like gold, it's precious, it's sort of like copper because it's industrial, but it's, it's not a specialty item. And so in this world, it gets lost in the shuffle. It can't be pitched as a one-dimensional item. This is perfect for this. This is per It can. It's a little bit of everything. And so that makes it get lost uh, uh, in this world of specialization. But as the world changes, and it's changing right now, it'll go from a world of specialization to silver is the Goldilocks metal. It's very monetary. It's very industrial. It's very high end. Therefore, it's economically important to grow an economy. And it's economically almost ideal to use as a store of economic energy. So let's go back to that. No consumed commodities in Bretton Woods three. One, two, gold is money. Gold is money. I just showed you the article, gold is money. Because of its neutrality, because of its high price, because it's because it's uh, neutrality and its complete uselessness. Number three, because gold, here's the payoff. Because gold is now an official remonetized store of value, it's also going to be a medium of exchange. Its scarcity affects its price, which means everything in the same family starts to snap into place ratio-wise based on scarcity. The ratio of how much gold there is on the earth will determine the price. How much gold is it? Everybody needs money. Everybody needs gold. Therefore, if gold is the very bottom of the extra pyramid again, then silver is just a quarter step above it, which means As the world reprices gold based on its rarity and usefulness in growing economies, it's going to price silver more in line with its scarcity and usefulness in storing energy for the economy or growing the economy. So I put it to you this way, because silver does not get destroyed, it's like gold. Because silver can be used to grow an economy, it's like copper. When the bricks, when the BRICS gold-backed currency is launched in their swift competing product, Embridge, when that happens, what you're going to see, you're going to see a couple different things in silver. One, the first thing I just described, as things are priced more in line with their intrinsic value and scarcity in nature, the price of silver must rise relative to the price of gold. Number two, as gold becomes even more scarce because banks are holding it, what's going to happen is people won't be able to get gold. They're going to get the second best thing, silver. Hence, silver as the poor man's gold. Silver will be hoarded by Indians, Chinese, Americans. It'll be hoarded by the public as the next best thing because they can't get their hands on gold because there's not enough investable gold out there. Finally, and this is, this is not gonna to happen tomorrow, but what's gonna happen eventually is technological uses for silver are gonna increase. And as crazy as that is, that's gonna make the price go up even more. Anyway, gold is money. Gold isn't just money. Gold isn't just money as a store value. Gold is becoming a medium of exchange again which means you have to transfer it or at least acknowledge that it's there to be used as money. And guess what? If gold is a medium of exchange, then you're probably going to have a de facto bimetallic monetary system in the East. That's why India is buying all that silver. 
That's why all this silver is being taken off the market. That's what's going on. The BRICs have decided no fungible commodities in their basket. That means, boom, gold. You just saw the post. You just saw it. The paper that said to you, gold is money again. That's it. Then, after all the gold's off the market, taking it to an extreme, and you want to buy gold, and I want to buy gold, and we can't, and it's $1,000 higher, what are we going to buy? Buy silver. That's how it works. That's how it's worked since the beginning of time. And if silver were a little bit more scarce, it would trade an even higher ratio. But silver is also industrially applicable. That's it, folks. Gold is fully monetized again. It's a store of value. It's about to be launched <clears throat> on a blockchain-backed product that will allow it to be a medium of exchange, meaning this is my gold. You can't touch it. It's used for money. It goes back and forth on a current account thing, which means, oh, shit, what are we going to have for money? What are we going to have? We can't have any gold anymore. There's no more gold left. All the banks have it. Uh, the, the, some China confiscates it. Uh, the U.S. taxes it. You can't own gold so easily. And that's where silver comes in. Silver is going to fucking explode when this happens. Is it going to happen tomorrow? No, I'm not giving you the clickbait sales pitch here. I'm telling you, go to sleep tonight knowing that this is the path we must be on. We are on the dollar, I should say, right? Chris will probably like this. The dollar is the Titanic. And the iceberg is ahead of us. And we, and our captain has been asleep for years, or maybe he wasn't asleep, he didn't care. But it doesn't matter how much he cuts the wheel now, you're not going to avoid running into that iceberg. And when that happens, it's over. It's going to happen. It may be slowed down. It may be sped up. It may be protected from with cushions and mattresses in the front. Well, those cushions and mattresses, by the way, those are silver and gold. But the Titanic will hit the iceberg. I don't give a shit about the price anymore. Because whatever the price is, I don't care if the price is $22 for the next 22 years. I know that the dollar won't buy me shit in 22 years, but silver will still buy me what it buys per ounce. Gold will still buy me what they buy per ounce. That's it. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta let it go with that. I'm not gonna go through the whole daily stuff. I talked your ear off on this. If this wasn't as coherent as 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 you would like, I'm sorry, because this just came out and I'm sharing with you before I share it with anyone else, even my subscribers. I'll send the links to those things that I referred to uh, so Chris can put them in the post. Um, have a great day and uh, sleep well, guys. Sleep well. Well, thank you, Vince, for the report. Appreciate everything that you shared there. And again, I know it's not the easiest time because we've been hearing about these things for so long, yet at the same time, you do see them playing out in the world, the moves that are happening, especially in the past year after Russia got kicked out of SWIFT. And we've seen a lot of the de-dollarization been going on for quite a while, but certainly accelerating now. So Interesting times ahead and appreciate everything that Vince shared and putting that into perspective. Hopefully you found that helpful at home. Before we wrap up, did want to thank First Majestic Silver who brought us today's show. Again, about two weeks ago, First Majestic released their 2022 production numbers, 2023 guidance. In 2022, they did hit a record silver equivalent ounce production of 31.3 million silver equivalent ounces. That was 10.5 million silver ounces, 248, 394,000 gold ounces. And looking forward to getting even bigger numbers in 2023 as they increase their guidance forecast to an estimate of 33.2 to 37.1 million silver equivalent ounces. That would consist of 10 to 11.1 million ounces of silver. 277,000 to 310,000 ounces of gold at an all-in sustaining cost of 1847 to 1972. And that midpoint of that guidance range would represent a 12% increase compared to what they came back with in 2022. So especially with the silver price higher, great to see First Majestic is expecting an even higher record production level in 2023. You can find out more about those results by clicking in the link in the description field below. And with that said, we're going to wrap up for today. But in case you missed Rafi Farber's silver report from last week, well, that one's coming your way now. <laughs>